Right now, tonight at 5 on WHAS 11 News, the cases of Casey and Misty Knoll might be taking a surprising turn. The two appearing in court today in what's supposed to be the last hearing before their trials. But now the fate of that trial is on hold. And less than a month from Election Day, and in Kentucky, you'll see a question regarding education. Next, why the lieutenant governor is asking you to vote no on Amendment 2. And ahead, just weeks after Hurricane Helene, Floridians are watching another mega storm churning into the Gulf. It is as high as Category 5. And coming up, one Louisville woman who took necessary supplies with her own plane. WHAS 11 News at 5 begins right now. A big reveal in the courtroom today. Jamie Knowles' wife and daughter are discussing plea deals to try and avoid trial. Hello, everybody. I'm Connie Leonard. And I'm Doug Prophet. It's a developing story. Attorneys for Misty and Casey Knowles said they're working towards a resolution with the first of their trials scheduled to start at the end of the month. Misty Knowles accused of spending over $600,000 of fire department money on personal items and not clearing on our taxes. Casey Knowles, her daughter, is accused of spending over $100,000. Focus reporter Travis Breeze and photojournalist Sam McGafter tell us if either defendant is close to a deal. Since this was Misty's final pretrial conference, they are running out of time to strike a deal. The prosecution made it sound like they're at a bit of an impasse right now, and Judge Medlock says he wants an update in one week. Misty, do you plan to also say that uh, Jamie manipulated you? Casey, do you admit that you uh, used a new Chapel EMS credit card with your name on it? Misty and Casey Knoll silent as they entered the courtroom. Their attorneys have privately been discussing plea deals in hopes of avoiding trial. Misty's trial is scheduled for October 28th on her 10 felonies for allegedly being a willing participant in her husband's alleged scheme to defraud his fire and EMS companies. We have been in earnest negotiations and we hope to have a resolution that is satisfactory to the court in the very near future. Casey Knowles' attorney says she will also update the court next week on a possible plea deal for her client. While their cases are separate from Jamie Knoll, Judge Larry Medlock says the victim impact statements in Jamie's case will be a factor in theirs. And that will have a big impact on whether or not I'm willing to accept whatever deal you guys enter into. Or Medlock wants to meet with all parties again next Monday afternoon after Jamie Knowles' hearing. In Jeffersonville, Travis Breeze, WHAS 11 on your side. Misty's trial is uh, scheduled to go first on October 28th. Casey's trial is scheduled to go afterwards, but we still don't know exactly when that would be. And one week from today, former Clark County Sheriff Jamie Knoll will be back in the courtroom for a possible sentencing. Back in August, Knoll pleaded guilty to 27 of the 31 felony charges he's facing. The agreement included a 15-year prison sentence and over $3 million in restitution to the agencies he allegedly stole from. Judge Larry Medlock says he will not accept the plea until he hears from the victims of Knoll's alleged crimes. Right now, 19 people are currently signed up to give impact statements next Monday. After they speak, it will be up to Judge Medlock on whether to accept Noel's plea or throw it out. And a Nelson County judge has chosen where the three men charged in Crystal Rogers' murder case will be tried next year. At a hearing on Friday, Judge Charles Sims had said the trial location had narrowed down to two locations, Warren or Christian counties. Attorneys had previously agreed on moving the trial to Christian County on the Tennessee border. But attorneys told WHS 11 that Judge Sims was not convinced it was the right space after an in-person visit earlier this summer. Today Today, the judge ruled the trial for all three suspects would move 100 miles south of Bardstown to Bowling Green. That's in Warren County. The trial is expected to begin next February. However, it's still unclear if all three suspects will be tried together. More local news here today at 5 o'clock. A man is in critical condition after he was hit by two cars right on I-65 here in Louisville. Metro police say officers responded to the crash on I-65 near the airport. Just before 10 p.m. Saturday night, police say a man was in the roadway when he was hit by a car traveling south. That caused him to fall into another lane where he was then hit by a second car. He was taken to the hospital with what police are calling life-threatening injuries. Right now, none of the drivers are expected to face charges. They did stay at the scene. 
A man is charged with murder and DUI tonight after a deadly crash in Henry County, Kentucky. Kentucky State Police are investigating that crash that happened just before 1030 the night of October 4th. KSP believes a motorcycle was driving on LaGrange Road when 21 year old Trustin Hasenauer crossed the middle line in his pickup truck. Now two people on the motorcycle, Austin Doan and Holly Hawkins, died from their injuries. According to witnesses, Hasenauer ran from the scene he also failed a breathalyzer test. Hasenauer is being held in Oldham County. We're learning more about the deaths of two people in a remote part of Shelby County. The sheriff's office there saying Jessica Hager was fatally shot by a man who forcefully kicked his way into her home. The county coroner says the alleged shooter was her sister-in-law's ex-boyfriend. The man then turned a gun on himself. In Shelby County, they have not released his name in this case. The trial for the man charged with hitting a Kansas family with his car in downtown Louisville two years ago started today. Michael Hurley is accused of taking hydrocodone before crashing into members of the Jones family in 2022. But they were in town for a basketball tournament. The father, Trey Jones, was killed. Now his daughter, Ava, a former college basketball player at Iowa, and her mother were severely injured. Last week, Hurley's attorney said he wanted to limit media coverage at the trial because it could cause bias and prejudice. The judge denied that request. Ava and her mother have been recovering for two years after that crash. The crash happened right at Second and Market in the heart of the tourist district, and both are coming to Louisville to testify at the trial. Mom Amy will be there for 10 days, Ava only three. No matter what the verdict is or the sentencing is, we're never going to get Trey back and Ava will you know, never be back to her old self. Amy will be face to face with Michael Hurley, the man who allegedly hit her family for the first time during the trial. She says she's disappointed that he's pleading not guilty despite video evidence of the incident. She says she has not yet seen any of those videos, but she'll have to watch them before the trial. It'll maybe feel a little bit better when um, this whole trial is over and we're done with it. And we can just kind of move on still recovering because that will kind of, I think, be the rest of our lives spending time recovering. Amy says Ava is pursuing a journalism degree with hopes of getting into sports media and that she's getting good grades at the University of Iowa. We are on a roll with weather here in Kentuckyana that is uh, really unprecedented as we have uh, no rain in sight for many more days to come. Connie, you and I were talking, mm -hmm. uh, even the St. James Art uh, show that just mm -hmm. ended had record crowds wow. and, and a weather stretch they probably hasn't, haven't seen in many decades with oh, no. no rain. They usually always have rain or heavy wind or something at least one or day, right? Remember the snow flurries one year. <laughs> It was great this weekend. And we can keep this beautiful talk going as well because uh, there is no end in sight to sunshine. You know, we had, of course, the big bump in the road with Helene, that heavy rainfall more than a week ago. And before that, a super long stretch of dry weather. We are back into a super long dry stretch as well. Upper 60s, lower 70s out there as we look upstream over the Ohio River and the bridges with a low humidity at 36%. And a north breeze today at around 10 to 15. And that's thanks to that dry front that moved through last night. And and has dropped us to below normal temperatures. And there's that area of high pressure out to our west. That's the main weather feature that will give us this north flow and keep any rain chances far away from our area for a very long time. So future cast here is quiet for this evening in the 60s. And then our overnight low temperatures will fall down to the 40s. Might get some furnaces kicking on overnight and may want that warmer jacket or sweatshirt getting started in the 40s tomorrow morning. If you're out early around sunrise and keep the sunglasses, we're looking at more lower 70s and all sunshine for tomorrow afternoon. So a bit chilly tonight with lows in the upper 40s in the city outlying areas in the lower to mid 40s, 66 at noon tomorrow on your Tuesday high up to 72 degrees. So just about perfection for a long time for us and all the impacts from the very, very strong hurricane Milton will stay well south of our area. And it's been upgraded to a category five with maximum sustained winds at 180 miles per hour. We'll have the very latest track from the National Hurricane Center coming up.
Ben, thank you so much. Switching gears now, Election Day is now less than a month away, and voters have more than just the presidential candidates to choose from. Right here in Louisville, Amendment Number 2 is gaining traction on both sides of the aisle, with Senator Rand Paul campaigning in favor. Meantime, Governor Andy Beshear says school districts will be defunded through Amendment Number 2. Connie? Yeah, the measure would allow state funding for non-public education, and if you vote yes, you would allow public funding to go to private or charter schools. Now, if you vote no, public money would not go to private or chartered schools. And today, Gabriel Gonzalez is following the debate over the amendment and has some of the latest details. Gabe? Doug, Connie, people on both sides of the aisle are making their voices heard. Lieutenant Governor Jacqueline Coleman and Kentucky Democratic Party Chair Coleman Elridge were both in Louisville today. Their message was very simple. Vote no on Amendment 2 because they believe it will cost taxpayers over a billion dollars a year. On the other side, Senator Rand Paul says this amendment is a modern day civil rights issue. Now this morning, leaders in opposition to that amendment gathered to discuss why they believe it's bad for Kentucky students and teachers. Lieutenant Governor Jacqueline Coleman said rural schools stand to suffer the most. State Representative Ketra Heron says she was in agreement with her fellow leaders who said Kentucky schools are already underfunded. This is just the final straw that will assure they don't get the proper resources. And so when you think about them having a sense of belonging, being able to play in extracurricular activities, having activity buses, because right now that we're not being fully funded, those kids are already being miss, are already missing out on some of those things. And so if we do pass something like Amendment 2, I just think that it's just going to, um, to make the situation worse for our kids here in Jefferson County. Now on the other side, Senator Rand Paul has said this amendment will help low income and middle income families. His wife Kelly Paul said her support isn't a criticism of public schools, the teachers or administrations. Now, if approved, the constitutional amendment would allow lawmakers to enact a school choice program like charter schools or school vouchers that would go toward private school tuition. And Kentucky Democratic chair was asked, what's the plan if this gets passed? He said they've tried to ask members of the GOP, but they are not willing to discuss it. Hmm. Um, and, you know, this seems to be an issue that has a lot of confusion on it. And when I've talked to people out and about about it, they seem to, you know, don't really know about like how much money would go to a charter school. And this just seems to be a lot of confusion. Yeah, absolutely. And I saw that today at that little press conference. Mm -hmm. You know, there was people there who who were uh, opposed to this amendment mm -hmm. and they were very clear on on what to do. But I will say in this article on the website, we will hear from the Kentucky Democratic chairman uh, Coleman Elridge, mm -hmm. who lays out why he believes that this should not go through.